how y'all doing this morning? Good, good. Wasn't that good singing? I tell you, if man can't get something out of that, something's wrong with him. I'm telling you right now. If you're a preacher, you couldn't preach after that kind of singing. You need to, you ain't a preacher. I'm just telling you right now, good music. I love that life song uh, about the blood. I heard it about two years ago. Of course, I've been around for a while and, you know, washed in the blood, nothing but the blood. All them, I love even the song about the blood. But I believe that took them all. Everything it said it took me right through when I heard that at my house on uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night. I listened to it, I don't know how many times. It just, I mean, it just lifts my soul because it's the blood of Jesus is what gets us there, isn't it? It's the blood of Jesus what keeps us. But it is good to be here. Uh, good to see everyone out this morning. And, and we're here, of course, today's going to be ending on the prayer, and deliverance prayer. And, and what I'm going to be talking about today is a very special prayer, one we all need, have to have. And uh, it, would be, it would be what you call a sinner's prayer. That's what you got to have to get into the knowing the kingdom of God, knowing Jesus is pray. And the sinner's prayer is like when they do it at the end of the, you know, end of the ship when they come up here and we lead you in prayer. You call that a sinner. For my sinner's prayer one day was out there. I'm going to get going here in a minute. I'm, I'm an old type, but when I was out there in the field one day and I know it was lost, know it was going to hell. And, uh, and all I know is the Lord, forgive me, I'm, I'm lost. I don't want to go to hell. Didn't know nothing else. Hadn't been around. Didn't go to church, none. My wife did, but I didn't. And, uh, but he knowed my heart. It was true. I, I knew who to go to. And that was my sinner's prayer. And, and from then on, you know, it, it, it changed my life. And it, it keeps on changing my life. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I got three points I'm going to be bringing out on that. And uh, of course, I, in, in my business, I do. Uh, I tell life insurance, do annuities, things like that. We got one contract. It's called the irrevoc irrevocable contract. In other words, once you sign it, can't be changed. And that's what I got with Jesus is an irrevocable contract. Once he applied that blood to my life, can't be changed. I don't care what happens, it just can't be changed. You know, it, it, and I like, don't y'all like that? Don't you like to know that when you know, once you've been saved, you got it? I mean, I'm telling you right now, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like it if I could lay down and sleep tonight. Now, don't get me wrong. Some things I, some, I don't know what I think I should be, but I know I'm going to heaven. And the older I get, the sweeter it gets, too. I'm telling you right now, when I was younger, I didn't think that much about it. I thought I was going to live forever, but I see right now I'm not going to. Uh, the older you get, the more things hurt you around. You think, man. Now, now I'm taking steroids right now. I might be a little jumpy. That one little cow that's up here where I, got, where I have a, had that cold. But uh, the only thing good about steroids is that you don't hurt no more when you get old like me. I, mean, I don't feel the pain this morning. I thought, man, I get to heaven. That's the way it's going to be all the time. I ain't going to need no steroids. I ain't going to have a new body. Isn't that going to be a good time to have? And, and I'm definitely going to have it. But just, just, I just love Jesus more than anything you can miss. I, mean, I love him so much. But I'm going to be reading uh, this morning, and I'm going to take him a text out of Luke, 15th chapter. And, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. A lot, so we could understand it, so they could understand it. Because we're not going to read all all of it. You know, it's talking about the lost coin and all that. But we're going to be reading now the 15th chapter, starting with the 11th verse in Luke, Luke 11, 15, 11. It said, "And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. And he divided unto them his living." And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his subjects with righteous living. And when he had spent all the, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to citizens of that country and sent him to the fields to feed the swine. And when, and when he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? And I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his fathers. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him 
and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And his son, and his, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned. Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and no more worthy be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put on him, put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill him, and let us eat and be merry. For this son, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and he is found. And they begin to make merry. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. Father, I ask you, Holy Spirit of God, you help me, Lord, bring this message out, dear God, that you want me to bring. Open up the hearts that we're here this morning, Lord. They might understand, Lord, uh, what you will do in their hearts today, Father. Lord, just be with us all, Lord. Just, we just want to give you glory and honor. You're just so good to us. We love you more than anything. Ask us the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, this, this story here, you've been preached several different times, different ways, but as I was, as Chad talked to me or back a few months ago about this, and I told him about the how that, because I so happened at that time I was going through one of those contracts with somebody, and uh, once you get it signed, you know, it's, it's over with. You know, you can't go back. You got to think that's so many days, but it's over with. You can't go back and change it, which is a good thing for some time, most of the time. But, and that's the same way I got, I, when I thought about that on the way home that day, I thought, well, that's the way Jesus is. That day I got saved, he played that blood to my heart. And I know he's living in here. Can't nobody take it away. Regardless. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. You know what it says here? He said he had a, man, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Give me the portion of their goods with follow me. And he divided them on his living. And see, I, you know how I become a son of God? And I was adopted in by the blood of Jesus. I was rebirthed. I was born again, we know my mom and dad, but, but I, had, I had another birth. I had the birth like a Nicodemus. He said, you know, is asking Jesus, how am I going to get to heaven? He said, I must be born again. That's a new birth. And see right here, we'll go back to what we're going to be talking about. That's when someone prays that sinner's prayer. And your sinner's prayer could be you know, what, what they tell you to do up here, repay you, do it in your heart. But when, uh, when you're praying that, sinner's prayer, don't you listen to what it's saying? I mean that you've got to know that the reason we're praying a sinner's prayer is because the word in front of it is sin. That's what Jesus come for, is to pay for the sins of the world. He couldn't pay for your sins. You said, I'm, and everyone is sinners. We all sin, fall short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. We all do. But he, give, he was so wonderful. God, he gave his own beloved son, gave to us that we might have eternal life and forever. And that's kind of God we serve. And I figured if God can make this earth six days and put everything around us, he can sure keep me for eternity. Don't y'all think so? I mean, with that blood, that blood's pretty powerful. And you, what you got to do, you got you to believe and trust in it, that the, when, you, when you get saved, you're saved for good. Now, there's some circumstances to this. After you get saved, this, that's another time. There's only one point there I was, I was talking about there. But the first point would be our contract with Christ doesn't come without conflict. I guess everyone knows once they got saved, uh, Everything went hunky dory all the time, was it? Uh, did you live a, a holy life all the time? I mean, did you sin after you got saved? Are y'all awake this morning? <laughs> I've got you then. I'm telling you, what if you said you didn't? You're a liar. Truth on any Bible says we all sin, even after we get saved, because we still live in the flesh. Here, we're all capable of messing up all the time. But even though we messed up, though, we still got the blood applied there. And this is what happens here. This is what the Lord showed me. What he's supposed to do. Three things I'm going to bring out. And this first one here would be, it says, And not many days after the younger son got all together his journey into a far country and wasted his subjects with righteous living. Now, that's sort of like we are sometimes when we get saved. After I got saved, well, I tell you, I was, man, I was, I, couldn't, I, mean, I didn't want to do nothing wrong, even though I did. But sometimes the way the world's got today, especially for young people, they're not old people, but especially young people, it's got so much stuff out there. Once we get born again, this new birth, and we know we're going to go to heaven, that's, that's when this conflict comes in with the devil. Also, that's when the conflict comes in with your, with your also your, I mean, your flesh here, because you still want to keep doing what you normally do. You still want to stay out there and do it. That's what this young man here done in this parable here. He had two sons. One of them, I mean, I'm sure he probably seen how all the other kids, all the other people's doing things. And I thought, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. I mean, I'm true to my father, but I mean, I'm tired of this. Have you ever, have you ever said to yourself, you've been tired, been a Christian, been a good at two shoes? Have you ever said that? 
Is it, can anybody say yes? Okay, then, that's what I thought. Don't lie about it. I mean, I mean, we've all fallen short. I don't tell you, I mean, you, get, you get so get tired of being so spiritual. Let me tell you something. You're not spiritual. It's God's one spiritual. And we've got to depend upon him. He's the one. But see, I'm sure this man here, when he was born, he was brought in. He went out and he seen his friends running. He said, man, I, he said, he's good. He said, Dad, let me, give me my, what belongs to me, my part, my share. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to be like the rest of them for a while. I mean, you know what? The Father will give it to him. That's the way God does with us. Even though we've been born again and saved. I mean, if you really, I ain't talking about somebody that just, no, you, you can say a prayer, but if it comes from the heart, because the Bible says with the heart, remember, believe it was righteous. I'm, I'm talking about somebody if you don't practice saying, if you practice saying something wrong. But I'm talking about we live in this sinful world, we got this sinful body we're out here, and we get away. It's real easy, real easy to stay away and see what happens. Is, but the Father allows you. You would think, you know, my dad, when I was young, and, uh, when I didn't do something wrong, I mean, he would have, I would not know about it. I don't think to do what see it much anymore, but I mean, he, he knows how to take my birthday stuff, put it that way. We call them whoopings back in those old days. I don't know what they call them now. I don't think they call them nothing much. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, I, mean, they, I mean, you know, you, uh, I mean, you, you, you mind them. You had respect for them. And see, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the way of God the Father is. You know, we've been saved. You still got you, you still got your own flesh. You still can go out. You, I mean, you got you still got your will. See, God don't take your will away. God gave you a, a will where you want to praise Him and worship Him, and, and you don't want to go to hell. I mean, everybody don't want to do that, but it's more to it than that. When you realize that's the only way you're going to get there is just believe in, in Jesus, what He come and died for you on the cross. I mean, that's something for someone to give His only begotten Son to go up on a Calvary's cross, and Jesus is willing to, to pay for my sins, and He's never sinned. That's a wonderful thing, but sometimes we forget about that once we get out into the world and, and the devil comes by and the, your friends come by and say, let's do this and get some money, let's go. I've learned a long time ago, uh, when you've got plenty of money, you've got plenty of friends. When your money runs out, your friends run out. Do you know that? They sure do, but you know what? Jesus never runs out. Never. He ain't worried about the money. He walks on gold up there. He don't want the money. All he wants you is your obedience. He wants your service. But during all during this time here, you learn. You learn how you make mistakes. And see, in, in, a, in a contract, especially in a life insurance policy, we sell a lot of lamb, uh, you always, you got the insurance for one purpose. First of all, it's for you, but really it's not. When someone passes away, that policy goes to the one you leave it to. And that's, the, that's, why, that, that's what is happening here sometimes. You know, sometimes the second point would be like this, you know, uh, uh, just, be, just because that we make mistakes, it, it, don't, it don't dissolve everything. It, 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 don't get, it don't get rid of uh, uh, all this. But what happens is when we do this, we should be learning from it. See, what we leave behind, we just think no saying on him a song, what would, what would I leave behind? And I know I've been had a lot of funerals. I'll be at the casket. Two things, effectively, is the lady they're thinking about. There's that casket. They're grieving because the loved one's going on. Really, three things. Second thing is they're thinking, well, I know he's was saved. He said he left a good testimony. That's a, that's a good thing, isn't it? And then the next thing is what I'm going to do afterwards. Always. And this was a millionaire. You always wonder because it's all because you know you get life still goes on. And see, I, and right here with this part right here, when this man was out here, he's doing all these things, he lost everything. The devil wants to take everything away from you. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take it all. He can't get you so. He can't get you if you've been saved. But he can get everything else. But he can't get you. But during this time that he does this, look all what you let, lose. And I say, I think, well, you say, well, what is the contract? We've got it right here. You can read, it tells you how to live. Did you know most people don't even don't open their Bible up none? It's okay if you do it on the phone, it's Bible too. But, you know, they don't know, they don't know what he's saying. See, we need to know what the contract says. We need to know what Jesus is telling us to do, how to live. Amen? Don't y'all think so? Can y'all say, what y'all say? Okay. I tell you what, if y'all get, I need to get a little louder, I think. But see, what it amounts to, see, we need to understand that how we live 
after we've been saved, we're showing other people how to go to Christ. The preachers can preach their hearts out up here. Like, hey, y'all got some good preachers, I'm telling you. They're doing a good job. But how do you act when you go on the outside? How do you act? Hey, yes, I'm a Christian, but how are you acting? How are you living? Are you, are you living for Jesus on Sunday morning, living for the devil the rest of the week? See, people look at that. And see, that's what you're leaving behind is things like that. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a bad thing when it's like that because we should be living right. And don't get me wrong. The best part about all this is, you know, and of course I don't know exactly what on this paper, but the best part about this is this. When the end does come, and you're laying there in that hospital, or whatever you might be, and it's just all about gone, you know you got a home in heaven. Even though you messed up during the time, you know, you know, what, you, you know what your kid is going to say? Well, see, well, I know daddy's going to make it because I know he's been saved. Then he might, it might be like this. Well, he didn't always do right, but he always tried. He always come back. See, in this, in this, in this conflict that we're in, in this battle between uh, good and evil, and we still got some evil in us because we're in the flesh, plus we've got the devil running around. It's always a conflict. We just got to make sure that the devil don't win as much as the Lord wins inside of us. Because the Bible says, you know, that he's living inside of us. Don't it say that? Anybody got a Bible? Raise your hand. Yeah, good. You ever seen that show on TV? I don't know what his name is. One smiles all the time. Get your Bible out like this. Get your phone out and hang it up. Do something. I mean, I'm telling you right now. Y'all are quite as much I've ever seen. I've been to jail. I had better services than this. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I used to go up there and preach. And I mean, they'd get into it. You know why? Because it's bound up. They knew they was there for a reason. You ain't bound up. You're here to worship God and understand what needs to be done. I mean, isn't that the truth? I mean, you might be truthful about it. See, that's what it was right here on this prodigal son. Here he went out. He had a good time. Wasted everything he had. I mean, went out, drank, partied, all this. And, but he was a Christian. How do you know that? Because he said his father, he was a son to the father. He was a Christian, but he wasted everything he had. And you know what happens when you waste everything you got? When you come to the bottom, when you hit rock bottom, you'll think, if you are a Christian, if you know Jesus, you'll go to him, you'll say, Lord, I have messed up so much, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm gone. And you know when you go to the father and you pray and you say, Lord, I, I, I messed up, what am I to do? And he says, don't worry about it. You're mine. You're mine. I'll take care of you. You might not have the money you did have. You wasted. That's your fault. That's on you. But you're still mine. You might went through rough times, but that's okay. You're still mine. Now, see, this young man here, he went through some rough times. He brought it on himself. He went to a place he was hungry. He had to eat with the hogs. And Jews didn't even eat with well, brown swine. He got in a terrible shape. But he seen when he got in that shape, when he hit rock bottom, I can go back to my father and say, Lord, I'm not even worthy to be called a son. I'm not even worthy to be called a son. I'm not even, I'm not even worthy to, uh, I've sinned against you, I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned against everybody. I'm not worthy of it. And that's the way a lot of people do now. Have you ever been in that shape where you hit rock bottom and where you, I mean, really, really messed up? I don't guess nobody has but me in here. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, where you just really, really mess up bad. You just have to go, Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve the blessing that you get me. I, I'm telling you right now, he blessed me more than I ever, ever deserved. You know why? Because I'm a son, and he's a father. And the father, they're always going to bless you. Now, he's not going to help you sin, and you'll pay the consequences of it down here as this young man did. And most time you sin, you will pay, you won't pay for the burden. It's not been paid for, blood paid for your sins, but you've got to live the consequences down here. That's the reason why we get these parables in the Bible where Jesus talked about it, where Apostle Paul talked about how he's supposed to live and all this. Now, you know what? Do the thing and you have a lot blessed life. You say, well, I've done all this and the devil still attacks me. Well, that's good. If he's attacking you, that means you're living a Christian life. If he's not attacking you, that means you ain't doing nothing. You're living out the flesh. And you still ain't living a Christian life. You're just following the people around. It's time we start following Jesus around. Don't y'all think so? I mean, in the time we're in, I tell you, what's going on in this world with all this uh, old mess going on, this woke stuff? And I, don't know, I don't know what that means half the time. I know it's a mess. But I do know this. It's time we get back to the basics, right? What's right and what's wrong. I mean, it's, it's, time, that we just, I mean, it's time we start standing up and for, for what's real. 
I mean, that, some of that stuff ain't real, I'm telling you right now. The devil is coming, he is, he, is, he is playing with us. He's playing with the people, he's playing with the Christian young people. And I mean, I mean he's, really, he's doing a job on them, but I tell you right now, it's, it's going to have to be a stop put to it, and we can. That's what all this praying has been talking about. Every day when he comes on Wednesday, they've been prayer. Prayer, we're praying for the family, praying for the uh, leaders, praying for each other. We need prayers for each other, right? You can do that if you're a son. Do you know that? If you've been born again, know Jesus is your Savior. Even though if you've messed up royally, you can still come back to him. It's this man did, this young boy, come back to the Father and said, Lord, Father, I've sinned against them all. And you know what? Most, some people, this is what some people would do. Like his brother did, I won't get on that, but this is what some people would do. Have you ever seen backsliders come back in there? What have been, you probably ain't seen it in this church here, but I've passed some small churches. What did they come back from? You know, maybe been drunk and everything else for 15 years, but they got saved when they was young. And they had a testimony on it. And I ain't saying that. I, I, I'm not up here to judge who is and who ain't. That's between them and the Father. But they would come back and say, you come back and get straightened out. Rededicate your life, get straightened out. I said, Lord, I've done so bad and all this there. But you know, there's always some old heathen sitting out there and saying, you know, he never get saved. He, he just. It never worked, but you know that that's that's what the way I was. That's what makes you best Christians. One that's been out in the world, had a hard time and seen what, when you messed up, how he gave everything away just because you wanted to follow the world, follow the devil. And now this young man here, he come back. He he he'd come back and get get money from his father. He come back to be a hard servant. And see, when you come back to the father, you don't have to come back as a hard servant. You, you're coming back as a son. Because you know, what the father says right here, he said, man, he said, go out there and get the fatted calf. He said, go out there and get all these things sure and kill it. He said, seen him a long ways coming off. He was, I mean, he was thrilled. That's the way God is. He's thrilled when he sees us afar off coming back. See, God, you can't get, you can't put nothing by God. He knows everything. Sometimes we think we can slip up by him, but we can't. He knows it all. But he, but he wants you to come back. He can't make you come back. If he can make you come back, you'd be a robot. He don't want a bunch of robots. He wants people to love him and praise him. That's the reason why we sang these songs. I'm telling you, you just want to worship him and thank him. I mean, he's so good to us. And, so, and we're, we're not, sometimes we just don't want to just lift him up. You know, the Bible says, or one place, it was in Rome, it said, you know, if you want to confess from your mouth and order to Jesus, be not ashamed. Have you ever been ashamed of the Lord? I've been in a place sometime. When maybe, especially if you're young, school or whatever, and, and people get talking about salvation, or you want to say something, but the other kids are sort of, you know, and most of them might be Christians too, they don't want to talk about it because they're in a bad place and all that. And that is bad, but you're still a son. You're still a son. I mean, that's the flesh part on you. That's the reason why that when you get into our contract here, you see exactly how we're supposed to handle things like that. That's the reason why we get in the Word of God and read and pray. And when we come together, that's really why the churches come together, because we need each other. You can't do it on your own, I'm telling you right now. A church needs to come together, as, as they do here. I'm so glad this church is like this. You come together, you don't put nobody out, everybody comes in. You come in the same way, you come in as a sinner, saved by grace. And it's by the grace of God that we can do the work that we do now. It's by the grace of God we keep on doing the work. And by the grace of God and God's love for us, this is what it said right here. He said, for my son was dead. And is alive again. Now, what he's saying is, it don't mean that you're born again, but you can't get been born one time. But what he's saying is, he, he was living like he's a dead Christian. He's in the world. He just, just forgot everything about what it should be like until he hit the bottom as the red. And he, could, he said, I know I've got a father that loves me. I probably won't go back in on top again, but I'm going to go back in. He'll, he'll feel faith me. And I'd work for him because I know he loves me. That's the kind of father we serve. Amen. Even though we mess up, God still loves us. And God will always take you back. And God will always, always put you out of the line working for him again. It might not be easy. People's going to talk about you. They're going, somebody's going to talk about somebody anyway. But you make no difference. Remember, it's for the, the father's the one's in charge. Listen, isn't he? You notice, he didn't say, you know, if you, I ain't going to read the other son or what, he didn't much like it. But his other, you read the rest of that chapter there, but his father's so glad to see him come back. And you know, God is so glad when we come here to worship him. 
and praise him. And I'm so glad because of this here that I'm a son born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm telling you right now, that blood. He doesn't take it because of that right there. There's nothing, nothing can take it away from me. I can't even take it away. In that irrevocable contract we got, even after you got it so long, you can't even go back and change it because you made the decision. Uh, you've been first choice. Can't, can't nobody do it. It's made to settle. And that's, that's the way this is right here. When God said, you think he gave his son to die on a cross for somebody who's going to change his mind a dozen times and said, no, I don't want to go. And you say, well, can you do that? Well, the devil gets you enough if you can. No, you belong to God. You belong to God. You might pay a price down here a lot of times. We do, but you belong to him. He loves you. He's going to take you home. You might not get a lot of rewards when you get there, but you're going home. And, you know, I, the closer I get, like I say, the closer I get to home, the better it gets. It just, it's just getting better. He says, for my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found. Then they become merry. You know, when you come back to the Lord, when you come back to Jesus, and you've been away from him, especially if you've got kids and stuff like that. And I know when I got saved, my kids out there, and they was little, of course, I was lost. I wasn't out. And they were so glad. And I remember the time I think going for the church, I was saved, I was scared to death. I wasn't of nobody. I think my Lord called me to preach. But I went up there, and I was so scared. But you know when the kids done? Chad, he was only seven or eight. I forgot he was. I mean, they was, it just sort of pushed me out. I wanted me to go. They was, they was happy because they used to drink. Never did beat them up like that, but I drank too much. But they was glad. My wife was glad. And I was really glad to tell what happened to me. And you know, it's not been the same since. Amen. Like I say, I've been like a prodigal son. I've been out some. Maybe not that bad, but I've been out. You don't have to go out that far to be out. I, you, you just go, you can come to church every Sunday and be out. I mean, when you can come and worship him, love him, praise him, give him glory, give him honor, lift him up, that's what, that's what we're here for to do, right? And then what happens, say, you know, it, it, on the end here, on the very end, and that, 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 that's one thing I'm going to, right here on the lights, I really like this part here, is uh, what are you leaving behind for your kids? What are you leaving behind for your uh, community? What are you leaving behind for your children? You're going to leave something behind. Now, you can, leave, you can leave money, which is good. I mean, it's always good to have money when someone passes away. But the best thing to have is what kind of heart you had, what kind of work you done, where you could come. And they could say, well, Daddy done this, or Baba done this, or my brother done this. I mean, they was, you know, they didn't do, maybe they got out, but they always come back. They always talked about Jesus. That's what you need to leave behind. Because, see, that's what's going to help the ones that's left behind. That's the reason why, you know, we, sometimes we look at Apostle Paul, some of these in this Bible here, but you've got to remember they didn't have this. I mean, we can look at this. we got this right here. I mean, we can read it. We can understand it's going to happen. And we know, we know who's going to win. He didn't, they done told us Jesus didn't win the war. We just ain't got to the end yet. I mean, we can read this. He gives all kinds of instructions. Well, this, that's what a contract is, and instructions. And we can look, and we look at this and man, what to do, what we, if we mess up, what we've got to do and all this. And all we've got to do is come back to the Father. Isn't that good that we can do that and that's all we have to do? You, don't, you, know, you know what? You don't have to crawl. You don't even have to beg. You just got to come with a humble heart and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've seen people say, you've got to cry, beg for three days, get saved. Well, they're, they're searching the wrong God. And I'm telling you, my God come to save. He come to seek and save those which is lost. Amen. That's what it's all about. Then also, my God is the one that come, and if you back to it out, come back to bring you back into the fold, back in there where you get blessings, where you can help people. That's the kind of God I serve. Any kind of God just puts you away. You know, my, I made, when I made a mistake, my dad, sometimes he whipped me, but I tell you, he always come back and set me on the straight path. Then when I got up older, I did get in trouble one time, and I was too old, or whoever thought I was, and, uh, and, uh, and I was with him, but the, but the law got me. But you know what? He come there and got me out, because he's my father. And that's the same way with God the Father. When I get in trouble, you know, I'm bad trouble, can't go nowhere else. I mean, nowhere. I've been there, honey. I know. You can't go nowhere else. I'd go to him. And he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. That man, I don't care who, what to say, who says, what's going on. He can help you right here. That's the kind of God we serve. Why would we want a God like that? Wonderful. That's what's happening here. That's the reason why that sinner's prayer starts out with it. I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need to be saved. I need to come in here. That's what a sinner's prayer is. 
Now, I don't know, I don't know no one's heart here tonight. Only God knows that. And, and I, I can't tell you if you are saved or you ain't saved. I've been, I've, I've seen a lot of people, I, they said they testimony, and I'll grab I'll put the testimony we got to. I've seen some said they wasn't act like the devil. That's between them and the Lord. But I know it's, it's a personal thing. If you are here and you are lost, you need to get this prayer taken care of. This is the most important prayer it is. It's when you ask Jesus to come into your heart. Because I tell you, without it, you have nothing, but with him, you got it all. And maybe you're here, I don't know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know who you are, but I do know he showed us love you. And would you bow your head just for a minute? You know, if you, if you were to be here, and you've never been safe, you never give your life to Christ and believe that, he, you know, the Bible says you've got to believe that he came, which he did. He came and he paid for all the sins of the world. He was sinless. He died on the cross for you and me and the world, everyone. But he arose the third day for you and me. And right now he's beside the Father right now. And he's looking at you and he's, he's, wanting, you to, he's wanting you to call up on him and believe on him. You know, the Bible says, just tell you a prayer how you want to say it. Like I said, I said three words. But it comes from the heart. But the Bible says, whosoever shall confess him, call upon his name, believe with all your heart, and shall be saved. And if you're here this morning, and I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray. If you want to pray, you pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I know I'm lost, but Lord, I know you'll save me. I trust in you. I believe in you. Lord, we just I'm going to trust what your word is saying. I know, God, I love you. And I pray you just please save me. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to one of our messages. We hope that God spoke to you through it. We would love to know what your experience was. Did you cross the line of faith? Do you have a question about your experience or about something in the message? There's a link in the description below. Be sure to click that link. Reach out to us. We would love to connect with you. We would love to provide resources for you. So let us know, and we hope to hear from you soon.